Welcome back to Jones Metal Products. Today we're gonna do something a little bit different. We've made a lot of videos now, I don't know, eight or nine videos, and it's been about hydroforming, but I've had friends come up to me and say, listen, I, I've seen your videos, I love them, they're great, but I still don't understand hydroforming. And the problem with hydroforming is that when the press closes, you can't see the magic that's going on inside. So today, we're gonna attempt to show you the magic. So I have some examples of, in this case, a ring, which would be mounted inside the press. And in this case, a punch. You know, if you look at the punch, this is a typical punch, it's loaded inside the press with a thread. So we're gonna simulate hydroforming and also show you, try to start to make sense why hydroforming is a good technology for you. Hydroforming or forming in general is the difference between flow and stretch. If you stretch too much, it'll break. If it flows too easily, it'll wrinkle. So to, to do an example, and again, I'm using aluminum foil because I don't have the strength that the press has when forming a piece of, we can form up to an inch and a half thick part. I can't do that today on this table. But showing you, if I just held this down with my hand and pushed it up through with no pressure pushed down, you're just gonna get a wrinkled up part. And that's not gonna work for anybody. The converse of that is if I restrict it completely, I'm gonna simulate it using this coining piece. If I hold it back too much, actually, <laughs> it breaks through. So this doesn't work for you either. So hydroforming came along and what hydroforming uses is a bladder. We're gonna simulate this today using a balloon. I filled it with water in the presses, they're all filled with oil. It's a pneumatic process and it uses oil. So we're gonna put the blank over the ring. The ring acts like a blank holder. And then I'm gonna use the bladder or the balloon to put pressure down on the blank. So now we're gonna drive the punch up into the part. And as you see, the bladder starts to expand. So this is pressing the punch up into the bladder. Whoops. I I should have lifted the bladder off first. So now you're starting to see the start of a formed or hydroformed part. From our example, you see how it kind of gathered right here at the side. There's a little bit of wrinkling. Well, in hydroforming, what we would do is restrict the flow. So in this case, I'm hoping that I can just tape the edge down to simulate this. Because again, you're having the wrinkles here at the side. So now we're gonna hold the sides out a little bit so that we get possibly a part that's not as wrinkled. So now we're forming it up into the bladder. The bladder's pushing down and voila. It gave away a little bit, so it wasn't perfect. The, the tape came off the part, but you do get a lot less gathering here at the side because the tape was holding it back. That's how we go from a really wrinkled area. Now in the press, they can get it to where there's no wrinkles on the part. But again, I'm not an engineer. This is not a hydroform press. So I'm actually really impressed with uh, what we've been able to achieve with a water balloon. So in our example, we had the balloon as acting as the bladder. Uh, what we want to give you an idea of is the actual size difference between what we're using in this example and what is actually used in the press. This is a full size bladder. And if you look, this is like two and a half, three inches thick. It's even thicker at the bottom and filled with oil inside the press, powered up to 10,000 PSI. It's almost liquefying this rubber material so it can do the same thing as this balloon. It can wrap itself around the punch and form the material. But when you're using something professional like this in our presses, that's where you're gonna get the part and get it without the wrinkles and it's gonna be beautiful. So 
So now we're trying to create a more perfect park. We have these formed parts, but again, they're not formed clear down in. Uh, they do have wrinkles or places where they gather. So we're trying to get deeper on an engineering level. We're gonna restrict the flow of the blank now from all four sides. Sam's gonna hold the balloon with two hands to get maximum pressure. And I'm gonna drive the punch up into the part. Ready? Yep. Am I pushing down? Yep. Okay. Hydroform activated. Okay, pull it off. Whoa, but it didn't, it didn't. It didn't rip. Whoa. And so now, especially on this side, you're almost seeing no wrinkling on the part. So again, if you're looking at the difference between the two, you know, where you're getting more wrinkling in here, now we restricted it using the tape and you're getting it to stretch a little bit. We're actually getting really close to simulating. Now, one thing I'd like to try is let's put the coining ring on this part. Okay, so the punch is up. Now we're gonna put the coining ring on the part. Okay. Now you're getting really close to a hydroform part using aluminum foil and tape. Now we want to tie it together with the actual press. We picked this one because it's a nice round part, similar, similar to the sample that we ran uh, with the tin foil. It's a nice round part without the wrinkles. So it's also pretty thick. It's quarter inch aluminum. So this is a pretty stout part. So what we're gonna do is load the blank up on top of the ring. The punch is under here. We'll lift it off in a second so you could see it. And then underneath is the bladder. So like the balloon that we had pressing down, the bladder can do extreme pressure. I think in this case, we're using close to 8,000 PSI. So when the press is closed, the punch will drive up into the material while the oil pressure pushes down. Using this tabletop example of hydroforming, we went from a very ugly part to the beginnings of hydroform to more of a full depth. We haven't totally gotten there. If you were on a press and you had full pressure and instead of using a balloon, you were using a bladder, then you can get to a part that has no wrinkles on it and then could trim out and be perfect. But I think for the example for today, hopefully what you're getting is an understanding of just the very basics of hydroforming and how this works and how it's different from stamping. So I'd really like to thank you for watching this video today to see the basics of hydroforming. If you have an interest in learning more about the higher levels of hydroforming, we have several videos that take you to much more advanced views of what we can do with an actual press. So go in, check out our other videos and continue to learn about hydroforming and what it can do for you.